is welcome our panel of Power Dykes, Francis Stevens, publisher and editor-in-chief of Denou, the hottest lesbian magazine. There wasn't a glossy magazine for lesbians anywhere. She decided, I'm going to make one. That's total rock and roll. I love my job. I love my job. I love my job. <laughs> Whoever was in curve, like that was it. That's how you knew what was going on. Like the ladies musicians, in terms of like the artists. Yeah. It was very hard to be out and open in the late 80s. I think we should do away with gays if possible. We did not see ourselves represented in any positive mainstream way. I was the one that was supposed to start this magazine. She got the idea and then she's just like, oh my God, I need money. <laughs> So I just applied for a bunch of credit cards all on the same day. <laughs> I just cashed them all in. And there they come. My horses came in first and second. At the end of the day, I had enough money to start the magazine. You know what the difference is between parsley and pussy? What, Franco? I don't know. I don't eat parsley. When the magazine put me on the cover, it allowed women in our own community to see a well-spoken, funny, intelligent, charming, gentlemanly butch, which is basically who I am, unless you cross my path. Just the power of seeing me. In the last 24 hours, I heard this thing that I never wanted to hear, that the magazine could be coming to an end. We live in a systemic, racist, sexist, anti-LGBTQ world, and we have to fight it every day. We want the place at the table we deserve. Visibility looks like us being able to be the authors of our own experience. Every time we put out a magazine, it felt groundbreaking. What's happening here right now is Franco's legacy. Well, hello, and welcome to I Love Gay Today. And I have a feeling there's a lot of folks in my past and her past that are going to love seeing this. We're here with Francis Stevens, a.k.a. Franco. How are you? I'm doing so great. It's so amazing to see you and reconnect. We have a long history. We really do. We were fortunate because uh, especially as I was reading your story that you that you published online as far as kind of what you what you're up, what you've been up to. It's interesting because, uh, yeah, our paths have coincided for over 25 years where we were we were growing this gay Internet company and you were growing this lesbian magazine slash that, you know, turned into Internet and social media. And it's just it's been one heck of a ride. It sure has. Yeah. But now you've uh, from what I recall, I mean, I think a big part of how I remember you is you were really you were always out there hustling. You were at every event I could ever imagine. You were at every conference and you were really pushing this narrative about reaching the lesbian market. Right, because, you know, with the women's market, they're harder to reach, I think, than the men's market. And really, you know, hitting the pavement and going to all the places that they might be. And also, you know, our, our journey with advertising also overlapped. Me trying to educate the market on, um, you know, lesbian demographics and... Uh, yeah. But it's, do you think it's grown up over the years or, I mean, uh, I'm sure that you'd probably see a lot of changes, but it seems like things have matured in some ways. The, well, I mean, I was watching TV last night and I think it was ABC had a, you know, a, a spot commercial of, you know, these are some LGBTQ people and we're celebrating pride and thank you for being with us. I mean, for ABC to show that you never would have seen that 20 years ago. Yeah. I mean, they, they, if, if, you know, when Ellen came out on the Ellen show, I mean, advertisers were pulling their money left and right. Yeah. Yeah. So and times now, have definitely changed. Well, especially when you're seeing things on, on television and so forth, because there's been this explosion of creativity and especially when it comes to video and TV shows and it, it runs the gamut, whether it was pose and all things, and all other shows in between. It's that's for sure. I mean, and not only are we starting to see LGBTQ people on screen, you know, for the lesbians, you'd see a very small demographic of the lesbian population. And now you're starting to even see butch women on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just Leah Delaria. Not just Leah Delaria, who is our <laughs> token butch, you know? 
<laughs> and I was watching the trailer for your uh, upcoming documentary, which it's actually not upcoming. It, it launched this month, I believe. Yes, it did. It launched for Pride Month. Okay. And uh, I saw she was also part of it and, and part of helping tell that story. But uh, uh, you put this, well, I would say uh, there's been a team that put this documentary together about you and your life. And uh, tell us about that. Sure. Well, I think it all started when um, my wife, Jen Rain and I got together. I would tell her stories about what it took to start Curve, then Danube Magazine at the beginning. Um, things like, um, you know, things, Kevin. things like, um, you know, in order to get the money to start the magazine, I applied for a bunch of credit cards, cashed them all out and went to the horse track and landed <laughs> I never knew enough that money until to watching print. the tra trailer, by the way. Yeah. And landed enough money to, to start to print three issues. Yeah. Um, and then it was either make it or break it. And sometimes I had to go to loan sharks to make payroll we were sued by a French actress and had to change the name of the magazine. And just, you know, there was a lot of antics that went on that didn't even make it into the film. But the, I think the film starts with my, um, you know, my sort of coming out, which wasn't a coming out. I was outed by my then husband, which a lot of people don't know that I was married to a man. Okay. And, you know, Jen thought that, wow, this is an amazing story and yeah. somebody should document it. And she started it off as a narrative. And then as she got into the story and was doing the research, she realized there aren't enough, um, you know, nonfiction um, stories about, about our life and our history. So that's when she changed it to a documentary and then teamed up with uh, Rivka Beth Meadow to be the producer um, and having them in charge, I really felt comfortable to have them ask the questions that I wouldn't want anybody else to ask because I really didn't want some parts of my life out there. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting because, you know, it's this, this documentary is telling your story. And, uh, uh, but what's it, what I find fascinating is that I, I've been able to stay on top of it because you guys have, I don't know who's doing it, the most amazing social media team. And I believe a lot of storytelling is now not just done through the video content and the, the blog and all that, but through the, through the medium itself, through social media. And your team is telling that story in a way that um, it, very few I've seen uh, do it at that level. Thank you. That's great. Um, our social media director, Danielle, I'm not going to give you her last name because I don't want her poached. <laughs> it's just really amazing. Isn't she? Um, she is. She is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to pipe in. Um, part of what you learn about my journey is that uh, I suffered an accident and I live with constant pain. So, you know, I'm not able to um, do the day to day, but I can pop online and, you know, post a couple social media things here and there or just tell her what we want to have posted. And, uh, you know, she is really great. And the women have been really responsive to I guess my, I, the best way to say it is my coming back. Yeah. 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 Cause you had sold the magazine and uh, that's also, it's, I, I was, you know, you've, you've documented all that really well, but in the documentary itself, while you were filming it, all of a sudden you had the opportunity to be able to bring curve back. Right. Well, what happened was we were about to shoot kind of the end of the movie, which was, we went to Clexicon in Las yeah. Vegas yeah. this uh, lesbian fan zine kind of uh, conference. And um, on the way there, we were, we were filming and um, the publisher of the magazine that I sold it to called and said, you know, I don't know if the magazine is going to survive. Yeah. So the movie took kind of a drastic change from, a, you know, documenting my life to what does the lesbian community need now? Yeah. And is the word lesbian still even relevant? And I know it's, it's almost like you couldn't have planned that better as creating like this. It's a, it's a true reality show, not staged. <laughs> right. And, but imagine you're the filmmaker, like you're almost done making this movie and then the whole trajectory changed yeah. and that becomes the beginning of the movie. Yeah. But now you've created something, the Curve Foundation. So how does all that tie together? Oh my gosh. I'm so excited about the Curve Foundation. Yeah. So 
you know, uh, my sort of my life's mission has always been to give back and amplify our lesbian stories. Um, so with the Curve Foundation, we're doing just that. We're, we have two projects our first year. And the first one is um, we're taking the 30 years of Curve Magazine and we're making it, we're digitizing it, we're making it searchable and it'll be available for free on the website, both curvemag.com and thecurvefoundation.org. So you can find the archives there because if you can't search them on, on Google, it's like those, that, those narratives, they don't even exist. Yeah, yeah. And really with 30 years of Curve, we've documented 30 years of lesbian history. And the other thing we're doing um, with Curve is we're expanding our community so it's not just a lesbian magazine. We're reaching all the queer women in the community and the non-binary people. Yeah. And um, our second project is um, for emerging journalists. So we're gonna actually be giving a Curve Award, which is a financial uh, award, plus uh, mentorship and um, uh, membership to NLGJA, because they're our partners. Yeah. And uh, do you know NLGJ, the National so, Association of Queer Journalists? Yeah. yeah. So when I say emerging journalists, um, it could be somebody who has been working maybe in me mainstream media, but now they're turning and doing um, coverage of, of our community, or maybe they're uh, younger, um, you know, early state career stage um, journalists. Yeah. 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 So we have our first cohort and they'll be announced, you know, I think at the beginning of July. Yeah. yeah. And it's really exciting to be able to give back to the community, not just by covering our stories, but by financially supporting this, our stories. Yeah. Things are very different now that you're, uh, you know, fast forwarding 20 plus years and uh, you're looking forward to where to go. And in addition, I, I'm guessing you must feel that like you're not quite as, as alone as, as this pioneer, soul pioneer kind of pushing into a, this lesbian market. I mean, with lesbians who tech, uh, Clexicon, and so many others that didn't exist before. There's such a there's such strong sense of community that's displayed online that I think is uh, you're a part of that I think is amazing. That's just it. And, and having the internet, I mean, when I started the magazine 30 years ago, I mean, really people yeah. didn't have access to the internet and it just gives a voice to so many more people to be able to share their true authentic selves yeah. and um but there's this lack of in in reality you know meet up like in real life meeting mm -hmm. and with lesbian bars being few and far between i think there's 21 left in the united states and you know, cafes and bookstores going away. It's like this, where do women meet except online, really? Yeah, yeah. No, I think there's a, it's going to be exciting to see where all this comes together and moves forward. So uh, I'm just really glad that, uh, and excited that we, we have a familiar face and voice that's going to be spearheading this as we, uh, as we proceed along. You know, I just love you so much. And, the, the, you know, the, the fun times we've shared in the past and, you know, what you've done to help the lesbian market as well, it, it truly holds a special place in my heart. Well, thank you. That's very mutual. Oh, so, thanks. But no, thanks so much for taking a few moments of your time and just kind of sharing a bit of your story out there. And uh, like I said, look very much look forward to being able to reconnect in the real world once, uh, once uh, all that kind of comes back together again. I know. I hope so, too. And, you know, I really hope, I know you've watched the trailer, but I hope you watch the full uh, movie Ahead of the Curve. Yeah. And uh, you can watch it on stars or any place you rent movies. Perfect. Well, great seeing you here. And thanks so much for uh, taking your time. Thanks, honey. Miss you. Take care. Bye. -bye. Bye.